Praise the Lord. Welcome to the Front Runner Podcast. I am your host, Isaiah Marshall. In today's deeply personal episode, I am joined by a special guest, my high school friend and former track and field teammate, Mr. Marcus Thigpen. This is part one of a two part discussion. In this episode, Marcus shares his challenging upbringing marked by domestic violence and personal tragedy, including a life altering car accident. Marcus highlights the supportive role our high school track coach played in his life during difficult times. And I warn you that there is talk about death. So I want to make sure that you know that before you listen to it. But in this episode, we show you how to run your race to win. This is Front Runner, episode 21. Praise the Lord. Welcome to the Front Runner Podcast. Today we are speaking with the Front Runner. Yes, uh, this sir. brother and I were track and field teammates uh, back at Detroit Mumford High School. And you went on to, to play college football at the University of Indiana, play in the Canadian Football League, the National Football League. Yeah. Uh, you're a father, a husband, yeah. and just a yeah. man of God. Man, I appreciate Absolutely. you. We got Marcus Thigpen joining yes, us. Sir. I appreciate you having me, man. It's been it's a pleasure. It's an yeah, honor. yeah, 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 man. It's it's good to see you. Good to yes, sir. to be able to chop it up together and just yeah. talk about life and faith and you know other things that we can we can get into. Yeah. But this front runner concept, you know, this front run the front runner is an overcomer. Mm. You know, they run their race. They run to win. They lead from the front. Mm. And this this concept comes from First Corinthians chapter nine verse twenty four when. Paul talks about, don't you realize that in a race, everyone runs, mm -hmm. but only one gets the prize. Then he says, so run to win. Yeah. So run to win. And so we're going to yeah. talk about the race, the race of yeah. life yeah. and ways in which we run to, mm. to win. Yeah. And, and my hope is that, you know, those listeners can be encouraged and edified through our discussion. Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. yeah, yeah. I love that concept. I appreciate that. So we're going to start here, though. We're going to start. Tell us a, a, about little Marcus Thigpen growing up in Detroit, Michigan. Like, what yeah. was your upbringing like? Like, what, did, what what's your story? Man, so my, my upbringing, I would say it was two different dynamics. Mm -hmm. So on the one hand, you know, being in a house full. So I'm, I'm the oldest of five, okay. uh, four boys, one girl. Um, so we always had a full house. Mm -hmm. Um you know, so that was fun. You know, we had cousins over, aunts, yes, uncles. My mom was, she always had open arms. Anybody that wanted to come over that was struggling, my mom had open arms. Even though we were struggling, like she still would let people there. So that yes, was sir. the fun part. But on the other side, my mom and my dad, their relationship was, it was abusive. You know, it was mm -hmm. domestic violence. There was a lot of domestic violence going on where yeah. most of the time you see men hitting on women. It was my mom hitting on my dad. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So I grew up watching that and watching this um, this dysfunctional marriage. You know, my yeah. dad would be gone most of the time. He'd gone throughout the whole day. Mom there working two or three jobs, which made me as the older brother have to grow up fast. You know what I mean? Wow. At nine year old, nine years old, my mom went out to work. She's like, don't open this door for nobody. Yes, you know, sir. Make sure you make it, <laughs> make, make your brothers a sandwich. You know what I mean? I'm, a, I'm here changing diapers. So I've pretty much been parenting since a nine year old kid. Wow. You know, and I recently just found this out uh, speaking to one of my my, my therapists. Like, you yeah. like you've been doing this for a long time, you know. Um, so that was that was the two different dynamics, but it was fun, man. It was a lot of fun, but there were some challenging times. You know, family were super close, super tight. Yeah. Uh, me and my mom were so close, um, and we could talk a little bit more where we at now because it's so distant now. You know, what mm. I mean, that's why I bring that up. Yeah. But we were so close, and I, I would do anything for her. Um, so that's that's kind of a little bit about how that that season was. Yeah. Um. But transitioning. Oh, go ahead. Oh, okay. I now, how how did that affect you? Like to see the you know the the domestic abuse happening. Like, how, what does that yeah. do, do to you mentally, or uh, how did that shape you? Yeah, mentally, man. I I so what happened was my mom. She would always put these stories in our head. You know, me and my siblings. Your dad is a liar. He's a cheater. Mm. and all this stuff you know so growing up i did not like my pops as much yeah. you know and now like i was riding down for my mom like i had her tattooed on my arm and everything you know um but it made me look at her differently as an adult 
Yeah. And I know we're going to go into that a little bit, but when, when I lost my dad in, uh, was it 2014, mm. all the, the truth started coming out where she was, you know, she was stepping out on him. It was all type of things going on. So everything that she made him out to be, she was the same person. So now as an adult, I got to go back and work through all the stuff that she done put on us as kids, wow. knowing that y'all were doing the same thing. Yeah. But it, it really made me just look at her differently and made me hate my dad. Um, but I always knew that he loved us. I just couldn't figure out why he would be away the way that he did or why yeah. he didn't show up or why he didn't play catch or never told me that he loved me until the day yeah. that he died. So wow. it was so many different confusing dynamics and I didn't really know how to put words to that as a kid. Yeah. Um, so I would just go around being silent, being shy, being quiet, not talking to a lot of people because I feel like I didn't really have a, a voice and where I feel like I didn't have that confidence to speak because yeah. I would see a man who was supposed to be a man quiet, being meek and just just taking it, you know, wow. he would never put his hands on her or anything. He would just yeah. take it all. Never talk bad about her. You yeah. know why she would do all this, this screaming and fuss and my pops was just yeah. silent, you know? Yeah. So that, that's kind of what shaped me into the person that I've been for a long time. And I, it took me a long time to come out of my shell. Like I hated talking. I just, wow. I just didn't, I don't know what's cause I watched him all those years or what, but I did not like talking to people, man. <laughs> really? Really? Yeah. So that, that kind of, that kind of caused you to sort of withdraw and yeah, that yeah. introvert, yeah. Uh, yep. Internalize things. And, yep. and it sounded like you you were even at that time trying to protect your other siblings as yeah. being the oldest. Yeah. Because wow. even 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 with that, man, they would like if they were here to fight me, that my, mm -hmm. my younger siblings would come to me like uh, my nickname was Marky. They like Marky, Marky, come come get them. Come make them stop. And I'm like, what you want me to do? You know, I'm a kid just like you. <laughs> yes, you know man. what I mean? Yeah. So I'm running in there and I'm yelling like, Ma, stop, you know, and all that. And you know, she'll see us like crying and yelling at it and she'll she'll eventually stop. But you know, it was just yeah. it was it was some hard times that we went through for sure. So, so some hard times. And yeah. so, you know, leading into into like your high school years, like when did yeah. you discover sort of like the athletic part? And how did that, you know, those dynamics and in, in growing up affect like leading into your high school years? Yeah. So, you know, I I, I didn't know any other way out of Detroit. You know, that's the goal for people is to get out of there, right? For sure, for sure. <laughs> you know, yeah, growing yeah. up there, he's like, man, we got to get up out of here. Yes, um, sir. But for me, I felt like it was going to be sports. I, I knew that I was fast just by running around, playing with my friends in the neighborhood, mm -hmm. playing around in school. But I was hit by a car at seven years old. Mm -hmm. And I was told to, like, I had two weeks to live because I had uh, kidney damage. Wow. And, um... Obviously, it wasn't true. I was misdiagnosed, but my yeah. mom didn't want me to play sports because they said I couldn't do anything physical, mm. you know, because they didn't want me to re-injure that, that part of my body, right? Um, so I begged and begged and begged her to finally play. You know, it's like, they, you know, they won't catch me, mom, too fast, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, she, so she finally let me, let me play at nine years old. And my, my first couple practices, like the coaches were like, oh, yeah, this, this boy, he got, he got it, you know? And yeah. they started, they picked me a running back and I was making plays, scoring touchdown after touchdown. And that's when I knew like I had something. And I looked up to Barry Sanders, you know, being okay. a Detroit, yeah. a small, mm -hmm. smaller guy, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? I'm like, this is who I am. Because, uh, you know, Moss is my nickname too, small and fast. So okay. uh, I'm like, I'm about to be like Barry Sanders. And, that, and that's going to be my way out of here to save my family from yeah. what I've been seeing. You know what I yeah. mean? Um, so leading up to high school, you know, I kind of get it. I kind of had that reputation of being the fast kid, you know, around the neighborhood. And then um, I begged my mom to go to, to, go to Henry Ford. She okay. didn't want me to go there because she went there and she was uh, like, you know, so, her. Go ahead. So you wanted to go there because she went there or like, was it like all my friends going there? Like, how was that? Yeah. So it was it was all my friends that went there. That's okay. why I wanted to go. You know, her and my dad went there. That's where they met. And they had me. I don't know if I said it earlier, but they had me when they were 16 years old. So they were mm -hmm. young parents. OK. Um, But she was like, no, nah, I don't want you to go there. It's a dangerous school. I'm like, but my older cousin is going there. It's the only time that I can go to school with him because he's about to be a senior and I'll be a freshman. And okay. she and she finally caved in and I went. And that's when all the trouble started for me. <laughs> you really? Know? Yeah. So I got it. I got around wow. some of the, the wrong crowd. You know, I was, yeah. I was hanging with some boys in my neighborhood and we call ourselves trying to sell marijuana and all that and just trying to make ends meet. Cause I felt, I still felt that pressure of having to provide, provide at home, but mm -hmm. also wanted to live that life that I seen everybody else living, Yeah, you know? Yeah, so yeah. I, I kind of stepped into that role, getting to the point where uh, eventually I stole a van um, from my ex-girlfriend's mother 
She was, she was going to let me drive. Like, I didn't even have to take the van. <laughs> oh, she was going to let me drive to the party. But um, while we were outside waiting for her, because her and my mother were cool. So okay. I was outside waiting with her and a couple of my friends. We decided to just take off, right? We leave. Mm -hmm. We go pick up a few people and go down to uh, Belle Isle. Yeah. And once we got there, we went through a little wooded area. Um, I don't even remember what part of it, but we went through there. One of my friends was driving at the time. And we had so much fun. Everybody like, let's do it again. Let's do yeah, it again. So, yeah, yeah. so I seen everybody reaction and I wanted some of that same, I wanted that same feeling. I wanted yeah. people to feel that, that same feeling as I'm driving, right? So I get behind the wheel and as I back up, I hit a pole. Mm. That should have been, that should have been a warning for me. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. But I, I kept going forward anyway. Um, went forward, went through the, the maze. It had been raining. I'm 14, you know, inexperienced. Wow. And as I'm driving kind of fast through everybody, like go faster, go faster. Um, it was a sharp turn that I forgot about in that, in that little maze and kind of slid off the road, going through all this mud and trying to dodge trees, hitting the brake, yeah. can't stop. Yeah. And it was just a tree that I saw at the last minute. And I kind of like, you know, veered the wheel over to the passenger side mm -hmm. and, and just crashed. Right. Um, yeah. And, um, like nothing happened to me. I came out with a couple, you know, scratches from glass, but yeah. I, I came out good. Um, I, I jumped out the car. It was smoking. I thought it was about to blow up. I didn't know what was going on in my, yeah, my yeah, little yeah. mind, you know. Um, so I'm pulling people out. One of my friends that uh, dislocated his wrist from trying to like brace himself. I had another friend that hit his head. He had a concussion, can't remember anything. And then I get around to the passenger side where uh, Lucretia, is the person that we that didn't survive the crash. Mm -hmm. I seen her body and it was just, it was broken and smashed. Like I literally seen her brain, you know, cause yeah. it, it was that bad. Yeah. yeah. yeah so yeah. I had to do a lot of trauma treatments and all oh types of stuff to get through yeah. that. Yeah. So yeah. seven years old, you get hit by a car. Yeah. And then was that 14? I mean, yeah. you get into this accident and then you see, you know, somebody close to you yeah. not survive yeah. that. Like, yeah. Yeah. So but what? you know what? The the kicker before that though, before before we move forward, I don't mean to cut you off, but no, no, you're good. um like two weeks prior to that accident, my mom she says, uh, you know, as as fast as you're getting all this money and girls, God can take it all away from you. Mm. And I'm like, I heard her, but we didn't go to church. You know what yeah. I mean? I'm like, who who is God? I wasn't listening to her. So after that accident. There were people that hated me. People thought I did it on purpose for whatever reason, mm -hmm. which is why I had to transfer over to Mumford. Like I couldn't even, I went to the funeral where I had to stand in the back with my cousins and family and everybody had guns because they didn't wow. know what to expect. Wow, wow, wow. So it was, yeah, it was, it, it, that's how I ended up coming to Mumford, man, and, and, and meeting you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it sounded like there was a lot of burden, a lot of pressure. I mean, you know, threats and all this. Like, how did you, as a young person, like, how did you take all of that? Man, I was, um, I, I felt protected by my family just okay. because I knew the, the type of people that they were. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I kind of walked around with my head on the swivel everywhere that I went, you yeah. know, I, I didn't really know what to expect. I didn't know the, the seriousness of it all. Mm -hmm. Um, I was still just a little kid, you yeah. know, I was just still trying to figure out life. Um, so yeah, I feel like that's how I handle it. You know, just, gotcha. just, just, for just, just trusting in the family and hoping yeah. that anything bad didn't happen. And making that that new transition over to Mumford, kind of getting as far as way as possible. Um, I feel like that gave me enough space. You know. Now, why, why Mumford? Like, what? That's a great question. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't. Honestly, I don't remember why we chose mumford as the school i think it had a good reputation and my mom was like i want you to go here and i'm like yeah. we can go wherever i just want to be safe i want to go to school i want to play yes, football man. you know what That's i mean awesome. so yeah then you came to mumford we ended up meeting now what year was that when you came to mumford so i came like, to mumford what 2002 okay i believe okay so yeah okay. i did two three and four there yeah okay yeah yeah because you was an 04 i was an 03 yeah and yeah. and then you came and kind of got under the covering of of Coach Lynch, yeah. so how was yeah. that dynamic? Like, how, what? Because I one of the things that I often tell people, as far as in my journey, man, like, you know, a couple of people that that I often talk about, and Coach Lynch is one of them. 
Yeah. Like yeah. one of the people who had, you know, some of the most impact in mm-hmm. my life. Mm-hmm. Um, just his leadership. Um, yeah. you know, to this day, probably the, you know, the, the best coach I've ever competed for. Uh just yeah. you know, he was hard, but he yeah. made you feel <laughs> like you was you was the guy though. You know what yeah. I mean? He did. He and did. so like did he enter your life? Like, how was that? aspect i know coaches play a significant role in the lives of of young people or can and so was that the case for you oh yeah 100 percent, man i feel like i wouldn't be who i am today if it wasn't for coach lynch Mm -hmm. he he instilled so many you know valuable lessons and tools in us even through the paddle i don't know if you ever got the paddle but i got that paddle one time Yeah, right I, office, I know about the, the the famous, you know, the famous paddle. Yeah, yeah, but no, nah, Coach Coach Lynch, man, he like you said, he definitely makes you feel special. Like he saw something in me, man, and I feel like he poured what he had, you know, his greatness in me, you know, yeah. making me faster on the track. Yeah. Even being so, having him as a track coach and a football coach, you yeah. know what I mean? Like it was a it was a double double win for me, mm. you know. And he was he was all about me, man. I felt like and while I was in there, you know, while I had my time there, um, yeah. Like you said, he was hard, but he definitely gave us those valuable lessons. That's awesome. Now, how long yeah. did it take you to like process and heal from that traumatic event? Like, was <laughs> it, you know, I'm sure, you know, you get to Mumford, there's still healing that mm-hmm. needs to take place. Mm-hmm. There's still, mm-hmm. you know, things that you you have to process. Like, how long was that that process, man? You know, it's honestly, man, it's still, it's still going on to this day. Mm-hmm. You know, it's I, and and the reason was because when I was when I was young, I feel like the the therapy interventions wasn't as strong as they are now. The okay. advances that we have, the the more knowledge and wisdom that we that's been made in you know the scientific realm and yeah. even in the spiritual realm as I as I you know grown grown closer to Christ, that's helped out tremendously. But that's awesome, I feel like I feel like people didn't really check in on me like that. It was mm-hmm. like I I was on probation. I couldn't get my license until I was twenty one. Um, so I was, it was almost like it was, I just had to check these boxes. Wow. So I had to go, go to therapy and I'm coloring and talking through things, but I don't feel like we really touched the root of what was going on. Yeah. Um, so now that I'm older and kind of seeing some of those things that still got a grip on me, yeah. I've been able to start releasing and talk to my therapist as an adult, you know, so I'm still trying to get through some of that stuff, but I've, Man. I've talked through it so many times now and, and cried so many tears that I feel like I, I can get through it now and, and not be as uh, tore up as I once yeah, was. Yeah, yeah. You know, I do have victory over it. You know, that's awesome, man. You know, yeah. I'm a uh, a youth pastor, and mm. you know, I um th- one of the the great burdens that I have is like, man, you think of, you think think about us as adults. Yeah. Oftentimes, I'm in therapy as well. Oftentimes, as adults, we are going to therapy for things that happened when we were kids, high school, yeah. middle school yeah. age. Yeah. And yeah. I'm like, man, yeah. this time period and developmental period for these young people are so important. And yeah. just meeting them where they are, yeah. helping them sh- help shape their 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 minds to a more biblical worldview. Because as you mentioned, like how faith um, has become a, a a very important have played a very important role in, in your yeah. recovery and your healing. And yeah. so just yeah. coming alongside of these young people and teaching them faith and helping them develop that, that Christian worldview to, yeah. to you know, to, to, to kind of navigate their race, yeah. navigate yeah. their lives. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's, and, it, and it's crucial, man, because I don't know about you, but we wasn't taught that growing no. up. No, yeah, we that's right. Anything we wouldn't talk anything about mental health, especially in my household. You know, my mom trying to raise all these boys into men. It's mm-hmm. like you know, you suck it up. You got to be strong. You got to be tough. It's hard out here. Like you, yes, you got it. You know yeah. what I mean. So we wasn't really taught how to express ourselves. Mm-hmm. So even even that, you know, because I've heard. Uh, I don't know. If you know who Tim Ross is? Yeah, I know, past, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm, but he mm-hmm. was, said whatever whatever doesn't come out in, in words will come out and up through your body through actions. Yeah, and that's why man. you start seeing kids and even adults act out in certain ways because you're not expressing that, you know. Yeah. So, um, it's, yeah. de- it's definitely it's imperative. That you get, that's you get that, yeah. You get that unprocessed trauma. Yeah, all that, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And so I kind of yeah, I lost my dad in 2018, mm, and uh, yeah, and my like just sort of like our dynamics where 
growing up in a single parent, you know, mm-hmm. mom raising my, my older brother and I, okay. and having a relationship with my dad, but it was very distant. You know, we'll mm-hmm. see him some weekends, some holidays and different things like mm-hmm. that. But so there was always this, this challenge that I had, cause I'm like, man, you know, that's my pops, but it was sort of similar to what you're talking about. Like we'll go over, we'll go over. And there was yeah. this, like this domestic things that was happening, but it was often his significant other towards him. Oh, and wow, toward, wow. and when we go over there towards us in a lot of ways, emotional and all that stuff. Mm, and, uh, yeah. and we spent a lot of time with her cause he yeah. was working, he was working right. a lot. Oh, and I so, see. man, it wow. was, yeah, it was like, it was a challenge, but this yeah. was our dad. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, right, man, right. we got to go over there. We got to see him. We want to see him because <laughs> it's our dad. Right. Uh, and so, but becoming an mm-hmm. adult and not fully being able to process those things with him, also. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And and recognizing mm-hmm. that even at the at the latter part of his life, where things were sort of, I guess, reconciling. And in fact, yeah. it was on Father's Day. Mm-hmm where we got the call that, you know, that he was on life support and everything, which wow. is very unexpected. Uh, wow. And the Sunday before he was planning a trip or we talked to him about planning a trip to Nashville to come visit us. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, it's just, you know, taking that, it seemed like just taking those um, unprocessed things, yeah. you know, and just, yeah. you know, uh, not being able to, to reconcile those things with him and so yeah, which is again a, a part of like the whole therapy process and trying yeah, to yeah. yeah so and then growing up in an environment where everything was rough mm-hmm. you know what i mean hard and, and as you mm-hmm. mentioned like you got to be mm-hmm. tough you got to push through it you got to be able to fight yeah. you got to you know just these other dynamics where you know, you couldn't be emotional, you know, yeah, <laughs> you could yeah, show, right, right, <laughs> you know, different emotions, you know, it's yeah. always had to have this, this tough exterior. Yeah. Um, but then it, wow. you know, t- to your point, you know, causes people to just blow up, yeah. you know what I mean? And, yeah. And, yeah. and those things show up in unhealthy ways. Yeah. Because I look at it, man, I don't know, because I'm, I'm studying to be a clinician right now. I'm getting my second master's okay. to become a clinician. That's what's but up. It's, it's like it's like a like a soda, you know what I mean? Like you mm-hmm. keep stuffing all this stuff down and, you know, you're shaking that stuff up at some yeah. point. It got to explode. Right. And yes, I sir. feel like that's what happens with a lot of people. And I know that happened for me. Mm-hmm. You know, as we talk a little bit more, you'll get to see some of the things where I started exploding and making irrational decisions, man. Wow. And now set me back a lot. But like yeah. I said, I'm on I'm on a on a good track right now, but we'll, we'll get there. That's what's up. <laughs> this is the end of part one. And part two will be coming out soon But I warn you Listen at your own risk We will be going deeper You will be challenged You will be encouraged And you will be empowered This is the Front Runner Podcast Until next time God bless you Follow the Front Runner Podcast And share with a friend Also follow me on Instagram At the Isaiah Marshall Subscribe to my YouTube channel Which can be found in the show notes And while you are at it, be sure to check out all of my released spoken word poetry projects anywhere you stream music. Thank you for supporting my creative journey. This is the Front Runner Podcast. Until next time, blessings. I'm